Hello and welcome back to part four of the gameplay ability system setup, verifying attribute data. I'm Thomas N and let's get right back into it. So anytime you're working with this system, it's really important to create debugging tools because as we can see, we have these player attributes, but we don't really have a way of knowing what they are. So we could print a bunch of things to the output log and have it just print strings and tell us what the what the attributes are. You can do that quickly to sort of debug and like make sure that they're there. But I want to do something a little bit better because I want to be able to keep track of these attributes over time and be able to see them on the screen and just sort of see what they are. We are going to create our first ability, which is actually an ability that's going to hold this debugging UI element. So we're going to be able to flag in the player character right here in its default values that says, hey, I want to debug my attributes. And then I want to box the show up on the screen that will have my attributes in it as well as the value. So let's do this by starting with the UI element. I'm going to create a new folder called UI just to keep my stuff organized. Right click and create a new widget blueprint. I'm gonna call this W underscore. That's sort of the generic shorthand for this is a widget. It's W underscore. I'm gonna call it at value debug. ATT value debug. Because again, I don't like typing the entire word attributes 50 million times. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my screen to my monitor size. We're just going to add a border. We're going to anchor it at 0.5 on the X so that it's centered and align it in the middle. Position to zero. We're just going to make a good size box here. And then we're going to give it uh, some color. That gives us a nice background. All right, and then on our border, we're going to create a vertical box. I'm going to make a horizontal box inside of the vertical box. And this is going to have text. And we're going to set some padding in here. Play around with these values until you get something that looks kind of nice. All right, we'll make this more like maybe 40. And then I'm going to duplicate this two more times. And yeah, I was off a little bit. All right, now I've got something that looks a little nice. That's okay. I'll get them centered. All right, and then we'll just update these with the names. So now we've just got speed, health, and damage mod. And then we're just going to bind these to our attributes. So our speed here, I'm just gonna create binding. I'm gonna get our player pawn. Because this is debugging, we're just gonna use this get world function. Down the road, I'll show you some more clever ways to do this if we get to any UI stuff in later tutorials. But for now, this is fine for a debugging tool. I'm going to get ability system component. Float attribute from ability system component. And the attribute that we want here is speed. Actually, we should rename this function for speed text. All right. And then, oh, player attribute.speed. We need to set this in a variable. I usually do a local variable. ATT underscore speed is sort of a shorthand that I like to use. Attributes. So this needs to be set to a variable because these literals in the ability system nodes, like these do not always stay set, especially when you open and close the project or if you have anything through source control or you're working on a larger project, so you're gonna run into all kinds of issues if you try leaving these as literals or even making them as a literal. It doesn't work. You have to actually save it as a variable in order to have it store every single time and actually work every time. Okay, 
And so what we're doing here is we're just seeing whether or not we find the attributes. We're going to test our attribute system before we attempt to print it out. And all we need is the number. All right, and if we don't find it, what we want to do is we want to return a string that says did not find. And I like to do something like this so it really stands out in the output log. So I can definitely see like, oh, what's that weird space? What's going on here? And I'll be able to tell that this is something that I put in. All right. And then we want to do the same for the other The trick I'm doing there is, so you highlight one box, and then you highlight another box, and you hit Q, and you can snap the first box to the second box. So if I highlight a branch first, it would snap up there. Is any trick. So now these are bound to our attribute values. It's important to note that we can grab the attribute values in this way. We can get float attribute from ability system component, but we can't set float attribute. There is no setting an attribute directly, especially not from blueprints. We have to initialize them through the spreadsheets and then use gameplay effects to adjust them as we go. So now that we have our UI element set up, we have speed, health, and damage mod, we need to create an ability that will create this widget. So now we're going to create, I'm going to make a new folder called abilities. And this is going to hold all of our gameplay abilities and gameplay effects. And we're just going to we dump them in here for now. Um, you organize them. Organization is incredibly important when you start working with the gameplay ability system because you'll notice that we'll create half a dozen classes to accomplish basic tasks. Each one ends up very simple and very small and once you really start working with it, it's not a ton of extra time as far as creating content. You're gonna right click and hit gameplay ability blueprint. We're going to inherit from the generic gameplay ability. Most likely you will want to create your own gameplay ability class. I find giving at least like an ungranted ability is always nice. Just adding a couple of extra things here and there to the gameplay abilities will add a lot to your project. So it's definitely something worth thinking about down the road. But for this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and use just standard gameplay abilities. So this one we're going to call GA Attribute Debug. Save it, open, compile and save, and we have our first ability. These are logic components. Abilities can respond to events in the world, they can respond to player input, and then they apply gameplay effects that then contain visual effects and damage modifiers and executions and everything. From here, we're going to actually use the event activate ability, and for this we're just going to create a widget. our new W attribute value debug. And we're going to get the player control. I'm going to add it to the viewport. And there you go. All right, and then we want to come over here to the details panel, and we want to make sure that our instancing policy here is instanced per actor. That's all we're going to do. That is our first gameplay ability. So, now in order to use it, we need to give it to the player and then activate it. Let's go into our player character and let's create a new U property. All right. And this is a Boolean. So, we're just creating a flag. We can edit it in our blueprint classes and we can change it in the blueprint attribute debugging. Uh, 
Next, we need to store a reference to the gameplay ability that we just created, which will also be handled in the U property. We're going to actually create an array of debugging abilities. What this is, is this is an array of U gameplay abilities. The subclass basically means we're going to have a dropdown that we can stub in an existing blueprint class. And we want an array of those called debugging abilities. So we're actually going to call this debugging passive abilities. Uh, now the reason they're passive is because these are these abilities are just going to happen in the background. We instigate them on begin play or when we start our round, whatever go sort of is, and then it will run indefinitely until we specifically tell it to stop. And the reason we're doing an array is because in the future we might want to create more of these for more debugging, doing more things throughout the day. You're definitely going to want to create one for gameplay tags at one point. So we'll need to use this more than just for this one ability. So we're going to go back to our C++ file in the begin play function and we're going to grant and activate these abilities if we're debugging. So we just created a spec handle so now we have a reference to our, our ability that we just gave to the ability system or it just gave itself. And then we're going to call server try activate ability. And that will go through each one of our debugging passive abilities. It'll put it on the ability system and then it will activate it. Now there is a function here that is give ability and activate once. This does function for a very similar purpose. However, I have found that when you use this function, it will make sure that the ability gets removed after it fires. So for a passive ability, you don't actually want to use the activate once because it's only valid on the server if you're running a multiplayer game. And it has a tendency to just sort of just stop running after a while, which is really strange. But I recommend just going through the two-step process rather than trying to use the single function call Oh, and I have a note that I forgot to add the super function in here. So apparently that broke the movement system if you pushed play at any point in there. So we'll go back into Unreal and we'll hit compile. And while that's going, we're going to take a look at our character again. And we're going to set those debugging systems in. So we're going to activate attribute debugging. And then we're going to set up this debugging passive ability with this GA attribute debug. Compile, save, go back to the map, hit save, and then for the first time we're gonna hit play. We're gonna see what happens. Oh, we're gonna crash. Well, that's nice. And we're gonna push play again and see if it crashes again. And it does. So it looks like the issue here is actually that our ability system code needs to be in the constructor. So now we have our ability system. We will able to compile again. See it compiled because it doesn't have an actual error, but when it goes to do stuff, it doesn't work right. Alright, then we push play and we've got speed and health. And our speed is 600, which is our default value health is 100 and our damage mod is 1. So it looks like all of our attributes are being initialized properly and our functionality hasn't broken in the game. I can still run around, jump, look around. So that's going to be the end of this video, creating an attribute testing system. And next we're going to get into our first gameplay effects. So stick around, see you in the next video.